Hi, everybody. My name is State Senator John Cronin. Welcome to this month's episode of Cronin's Corner. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by the Executive Director of New View Communities, Mark Doan. Uh, New View is a, a really integral partner for uh, all of the community development, whether it's housing or small business and entrepreneurship, uh, all of those things that are happening in North Central Massachusetts and, and is a, a driver of uh, impactful change and, and progress in our community. So Mark, thank you so much for being with us today and, uh, and agreeing to have this conversation. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really, we're really excited to be here and appreciate all of your support for all of our efforts. So for people who are unfamiliar with what New View is and what your mission is, can you, can you kind of describe uh, what it is you guys do? Sure, we're a community development corporation. We're sort of the only one here in North Central Massachusetts. So we work sort of from Harvard to Athol. So a lot of that, of course, is focused in Fitchburg and Leominster and uh, this area, those gateway cities and around. Um, we're about 40 years old, so we started off in the Clegon neighborhood and we've been expanding sort of ever since. Uh, and our vision is, I think says it all, we sort of envision healthy neighborhoods where residents choose to live, work, and invest. And so there's been a number of exciting projects that people know and, and people can see that New View has taken on over the past, say, 10 years. Could you talk a little bit about some of those, uh, the housing projects at Carter School and uh, maybe what's, what's next? Sure. So a few years ago, we were looking, uh, you know, one of the things we would like to do is we like to have affordable housing and we really like to take advantage of the assets that we have in our gateway cities. And one of those is old historic buildings. So a few years ago we worked with uh, the mayor of Lemonster and we took the Carter School that had been vacant for many, many years uh, and we converted it into 39 apartments, uh, affordable apartments for residents of the whole region. It looks really, really beautiful and we learned a lot about renovating schools. So our next project is going to be uh, also with historic schools is to renovate the B.F. Brown School, the City Stables, and the High School Annex into 68 uh, affordable or mixed income affordable uh, artist preference housing. So we're doing that in partnership with the Fitchburg Art Museum which is right across the street. We're very excited about it. It's only the second in the state that's sort of put together this way, so we're breaking a lot of ground. We've had so many partners help us pull that together. I think one of the cool things about this project is it's got the potential to really transform the neighborhood and, and north of Maine and really breathe so much life into uh, the, the downtown and Main Street in Fitchburg. Um, can, we, can we bring up some of the uh, photos that we have of, of what the arts community is going to look like? So, so what are we looking at right now and, and, and what's really the vision for, for the artist preference housing in, in the downtown? Yep, so what you're looking at right now is the uh, that's the auditorium of the inside, what, uh, an artist rendering of the inside of the auditorium of the B.F. Brown School. You can see if you look, uh, the windows look just like, uh, because this building is being renovated historically, the windows are still the same old giant windows. Yep. The height of the ceiling is the same. And uh, the balcony, so it looks just like an auditorium uh, with these things here. Some of the artist amenities that we're talking about doing here uh, in addition to the great light, so you can see potential visual artists. We don't have this on the rendering, but the stage is going to turn into something that's soundproof because a lot of artists make noise, musicians and things <laughs> like that. They make noise. So uh, those are some of the things that were, that, that's what the inside of the, of the auditorium might look like when we're done. And what do you hope the synergy is between the Fitchburg Arts Museum and this housing development? The Fitchburg Art Museum has been a critical partner all the way along. So one of the things that we've done is uh, they're this huge cultural asset. The only, you know, they're, our, they're the art museum of this area. Right. And they're providing a lot of the intellectual capital so that we'll really have a community of artists that want to move into uh, the Fitchburg Arts community. So we've been partnering with them to help come up with this, uh, the criteria so we can make sure that people are artists. We're defining artists very broadly. Uh, so anybody involved in the creative economy, so an architect could be an artist, yep. a writer could be an <coughs> artist, a musician as we talked about, a computer graphic designer could potentially be an artist. Uh, so a lot of different people could be artists and we've been working with uh, Nick Capasso and the folks at the Art Museum to help us get the word out um, and also to build the intellectual capital. It's not just about a building, but it's also about people in Fitchburg feeling 
wow, arts is something that I could, uh, you know, arts is something that, that it'd be a great place to live in Fitchburg and to celebrate and do my artwork. I think there's a unity of conception that exists now in, in Fitchburg, I, I think across municipal and state level leaders of, of building downtown as a destination and, and really trying to leverage the assets like Fitchburg Arts uh, the, the art museum um, to create this tourism and arts and culture economy and, and destination. Was that an easy sell? Because I know that that is something that you have been driving for a number of years and, and was a process. Could, could you speak to how, maybe some of the challenges to get everybody rowing in the same direction with that? Yeah, uh, that is a great analogy. It is about uh, getting everybody comfortable that arts and culture are uh, is a way to take advantage of the assets that Fitchburg and many, not just Fitchburg, but many older gateway cities have. We want to preserve those assets and build on them. So for Fitchburg, having Fitchburg State University, having a long downtown that has many historic buildings, right. having a city hall that's back on Main Street uh, is something that allows us to build on the assets. So here we are, this is an overview. So you can see the B.F. Brown School has, is the building with the white. Uh, roof on it right there, right across the street from the Fitchburg Art Museum. Uh, in the background is Low Park. So part of this, the city was really smart and created what's called a 40R district. Don't want to get too much into the weeds, but that allows the city to receive some funds when this project is done. Uh, and hopefully they'll use those, some of those funds to help improve Low Park for whatever the community wants to do. Next to the B.F. Brown School is the city, former city stables. Those will also be renovated. Whoops, if you can go back to the former, that slide is the, uh, yeah, so that's the city stables sort of on the same slide. So is uh, that the like the side. fire department kept the horses there or? Yeah, what we was... did here, the fire department kept the horses there. It's been really, uh, but for a long time it's just been vacant. That gotcha. building has just been vacant. And then next to it across the street <laughs> is the former high school annex. Sort of you can see it there right next to Longjo Middle School. And that building is really the one that's the most prominent. That's the one you see from far away. It, how old is that building? These are all around 1890. Wow. Um, uh, I think the stables are a little bit earlier. Um, and uh, that building is in the toughest shape, for sure. So it was that, so. Uh, but, but it, uh, I mean, all these buildings are absolutely stunning, right? I mean, they're, they're really magnificent. and. We came really close to losing them. Right? Can, can you speak to some of the challenges with the roof? And um, there were moments where I think all of us were worried that the Fitchburg Arts community was was not going to move forward or happen. Um, yeah, as we uh, as I, I like to say, you had hair when this this project started, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we've been working on this for almost uh, I think ten years ago is when the city put out the RFP. And uh, certainly the time that the project was most in the balance was when the fire took place at BF. Yep. Uh, it burned off the roof, and that was a time when the city really could have gone either way. The mayor and I have, uh, and many of us have said, okay, they had already committed to sell the building to us, but now they didn't really need to. What were they gonna do? It could have been a great parking lot for the art museum when that yep. needed it. Uh, there are a lot of other uses for that land. and. Um, People really came together and decided, okay, we're going to make this happen. And the city worked really hard to get the insurance proceeds they needed so that we could put the roof back on the building so we could preserve it. Uh, and that was really the time. It took a lot of work, uh, but that was really the time when it came together. After that, we don't need to go into all the things, but it turned out there was a little piece of, we had to do some work on low parkland. So, so we had to pass right? legislation at the state level to allow us to actually going to put a little parking lot on Low Park, uh, so that people will be able to park there. Yep. Just for uh, just for the park. Um, so that was a. It is never a good idea to get a call from the mayor in the, at five o'clock in the morning. And he was up there a lot longer before that. But it's never a good idea to get there. No. Um, and since then, people really rallied around it. We did a market study that showed that this is going to be something that's very popular, and. Uh, uh, you know, again, the art museum was a huge partner because for them, wow, we could have free parking, something they don't even have. And they said, no, what we want is artists. That's what's going to make our, uh, you know, that's what's going to help build the art economy in, in, in Fitchburg. And it will really help make the Fitchburg Art Museum stand out because now 
they'll not just be an art museum, but they'll be an art museum and with people and the people there too, and help us develop that intellectual capital. I think any thoughtful approach to community development or revitalization really hinges on housing. I think across the state, there's a, a wide recognition that um, that we don't have sufficient housing stock to to grow for young families to be able to get into the market to own, um, and, and everything. I think at the state level is, especially right now, we're at a bit of an inflection point, and we are talking about housing, 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 at a time where it's never been more difficult to build and more expensive to build. Could you talk about just some of the challenges to put this project together to to close and you know hopefully to break ground very soon? But just what a difficult environment it is. Yeah, it has been really hard. Um, you know, with all the supply chain issues, it's the contractors feel under pressure to make sure they can deliver the schedule that they want to do, that you know we need them to deliver. Um, it's, there's labor shortages as, t as well, so that's hard on the contractors. Inflation, so our interest rate went up uh, for what we're paying for the debt on the building. So all of those things have been really, really hard to, and our team has done a great job of chasing them down so that we now have a construction contract in place. By the time everybody's seeing this, uh, we will be uh, closed and in the ground, and there we go. Yeah. <laughs> closed and in the ground. Um, so it has been a real challenge, and our team has worked really, really uh, hard to just pull everybody together. One way to think about it is that a few years ago, like when we did Carter School, we had, I don't know, six or seven sources, and here we have many, many more sources of funds. So that means every lender, every investor, has additional requirements that they need which just makes the closing process harder to do to meet all those requirements. And it's just an incredibly burdensome process in terms of compliance and um, and really, I mean, what you've done an incredible job of is innovating and putting together a, a capital stack and a financing plan that I don't think many people have the capacity to do. So I am very grateful for it. Um, you know, we, so we are filming in, um, in, in June right now at the State House yesterday. We the Senate passed a, a really important housing provision that I am I'm really proud of. It's the Housing Development Incentive Program, which has uh, been in existence for 10 years, but it is a tax credit for market rate housing in gateway cities, up to two million dollars to um, to help finance projects in uh, some of the most economically depressed gateway cities across the state, where the the math and the financing doesn't work. But I I hope that is an important tool moving forward to to green light projects and to get to get building because um, we need every type of housing we need uh, every type of housing everywhere uh, and it, it's a really challenging environment to to get people to invest in, in gateway cities at a time where it's it's prohibitively expensive to build um, aside from that what are what are some of the things that you believe the state can do more of uh, to spur housing production to make sure where uh, we're building all types of housing and, and, and building healthy communities. So it's really exciting. So congratulations on getting HDIP passed because people have asked me what type of housing do you want? More. That's yeah. the answer. We need more. Uh, so we need more affordable housing, but we also, uh, in certainly in, in, some, uh, in some communities, they don't need any more market rate housing. They have enough luxury housing and all sure. that. But in our communities, we could use a mix of housing. And that's one of the things that we're doing in all of our projects now is we're putting a mix of housing in so we have more housing both at the lower level and at the upper level so it's not uh, that's what creates a healthy community and that's what a healthy building and a healthy community so we're really excited that the Healy administration has now created an executive office of housing and livable communities for the first time in decades for the first time right? in decades I think I have the name right it's gonna take me a while to do that um, and uh, we'll call it the housing secretariat we can't screw that one up oh, there right? we go yeah. that's a good one um, so it's great that they're just placing that emphasis on housing. The Mass Dreams program was really terrific for, particularly for residents of Fitchburg and Lemonster. It allowed people to purchase a home at a time when it is with interest rates rising uh, and home prices rising and fewer homes on the market. Right. Uh, that Mass Dreams program has allowed, allowed a lot of people to purchase their first home and to build equity. And, and generational wealth, right? Correct. It, I mean, it helps close wealth gaps. I mean, it helps. Um, it really helps keep people in the middle class as, as they age um, and, and as they grow, and, and it's better to be paying yourself than, uh, than perhaps rent. 
Yeah. Again, I think it goes to this notion that we need all types of housing. Sure. So some people are ready to move out of their house and rent, like the last, that's the yeah, last thing right. they want. Yep. Yep. Other people are ready to move into, you know, want to own their home. Younger families want to be able to buy their first home. So that's why I just think we need more of, more of these different type of programs. And it's great that the state is funding them because that gives us the flexibility to design the programs to meet the requirements. And it may not be a one size fits all in Different communities have different markets and different needs. Right, right. in Boston, yeah. everywhere housing prices are going up. In Boston, some of those housing prices are just so high. What they need is just, they just want more affordable housing and that's all they want. They don't need any more luxury housing. Other parts of the Commonwealth need a mix of both. Right. Um, New View is not a, a one trick pony though. I mean, there are so, so many different things that you do in the community. Um, can you talk about some of your support for small business and how you support especially entrepreneurs here in, in North Central? Yeah, we've been very fortunate. Again, thanks to the state, we have a terrific, and a, a, and a number of other funders. We provide technical assistance to small businesses. Um, so what we like to say is if you want to start a small business, it's great to come, try it, put your plan down on paper, make a mistake on paper, try it out, uh, get that business plan together, and then go, rent your building or whatever it is go that get you the loan go right? get the loan yeah. do all those <clears throat> things so uh, we've worked with with so many different um, entrepreneurs uh, who want to start their business or maybe they're in a little bit of trouble we saw this a lot during the pandemic yeah. where businesses businesses had to shift and uh, there were wrenches thrown in everybody's business plan yeah that, to, that's right yeah. exactly so now we all know well we think we know how to, to deal with the virus but at the beginning for many businesses, it was really, really hard. So uh, we're helping people if their business is changing or if they want to start a new business. And we've done a lot of that. Uh, been a, a great partnership in the city of Fitchburg in particular, where people have come together to help start a lot, help start a lot of these businesses. So the, the city will help out with on the regulatory side. Uh, we've been a great partner with the chamber and the development corporation to help out on the financing side or one of our local lenders. Uh, if somebody can go to the to the local lender, and we provide the small business technical assistance, and that same formula works throughout. Uh, Whether you're in Ashby or in right, yeah, it doesn't everywhere. matter. Yep, yeah, same uh, same thing. So, but it's great when people come together like that. So we've done a lot on that. Another place where we've seen a lot is uh, we've created a steward program. So when we talk about people wanting to live, work, and invest, one of the things is what ideas do people have to help their own communities? So early on, we started the art stewards. Um, at the beginning of the show, I think one of your little flashes had a, a visit there that you had perhaps with some of those art stewards. So many of the murals that you're seeing uh, in Fitchburg, but throughout the region uh, were, uh, it was a, it's a whole team effort, but art stewards are really, important to do that. We're seeing a huge... That's a reminder there's some really talented people around too, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's taking advantage of our local assets. Yep. Um, so we have a whole child care entrepreneur group that of that want to start new child care, which we know is really hard. That's one of the issues that uh, keep people from work. And we also have a group that's doing a lot on environmental work right now too, with all the work that people are doing to help preserve the planet with climate change. Yep. There's a group that's coming together to say, how do we work as a team? Um, so those are a few of the different steward leadership groups that we have that are out there that are working. And if you have an idea, we'd love to hear from you because a lot of what we're doing is getting people together who just want to bounce ideas and work together and as a team. And make their community better. Right? Work together yeah. as a team. Weave a web together so you're not <clears> out there alone saying, wow, am I the only person who cares about the climate? Oh, no, there's a whole group of other people that are working together on this. One of the things I really appreciate, and I, I represent... 10 different cities and towns, the challenges that are present in one community are not the same as the challenges present in another community. Um, what, in terms of North Central and you know the region here in North Worcester County, what, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see? Uh, and you know, what, is, what do you hope New View's role continues to be to, to meet some of those and address them? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, we had a whole conversation about this at staff meeting, and I'm actually really optimistic. I feel like the, I was the most optimistic one, so that, maybe that's not that's a good thing. That's why you're thing. the leader, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, which is unusual for me, too. Usually it's like, oh. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. yeah, how are we gonna get all these things done? So, 
I feel like the hybrid environment could really help communities in in you know North Central Massachusetts so that we're not all commuting into Boston all the time. Right. There are people who have to be there. My wife is a teacher. Uh, you know, nurses. Uh, healthcare, they have to be on site, but there's a lot of people who don't have to. If we can get some of those people off the road working from home a few days. Uh, and I think the train in the North Station is such an incredible asset for, for the Twin Cities too, especially if you're, you know, you're, you're in a hybrid work environment and you need to be in town one or two days a week. Um, that's a lot more palatable commute than, than taking the train five days a week, I think, just in terms of, um, you know, it's, it's realistic now. Yeah, and I just think people want, uh, you know, want a little bit more space. The homes out here, you have a, certainly like compared to Boston, for many places here, you have a little bit more uh, bang for your buck. Bang for your buck, a little more space. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges that we have is to just believe in ourselves, and uh, you know, that's what we've seen with the Fitchburg Arts community, and many communities are good at this: is finding the local assets and taking advantage of them. And as you said, they're not going to be the same in every community. But that's, I think, the critical thing that each community needs to do is to say, what are the assets that we have here? How can we build on them? Because that's what attracts other people uh, to, you know, to want to live there. That's what I think we have a challenge about creating a, a sense of place um, because people want to do things with other people. Right. We want to uh, be together. We don't just want to be just on Zoom and Teams or whatever it is. Uh, so I think that's one of the, you know, how are we going to create that sense of place? So uh, that's why, you know, the small business team that we do, the leadership stuff, and we didn't talk about it, but we do a lot of housing services. So we help people purchase their first homes. Um, and uh, a lot of that is helping people repair their credit. So maybe yeah. they had a tough time during the pandemic. We have examples of people whose credit was very low. We were able to help them increase their credit, help them buy a first home. Now they can build equity. And for some people, that's some people it's very easy. Uh, we have one story though where it's been, you know, a long uh, journey, but they stuck at it, and we've been able to provide them with financial coaching. So that and it's life changing, right? Yeah, to, to own your own home for the first time, right? Yep. And the other thing, the other <coughs> challenge is, you know, one bad thing can knock people off. So, uh, you know, if you're many, many of us live paycheck to paycheck, and what happens when your car, uh, you know, you're in an accident? Maybe it's not even your fault, but now you can't get to work. How do you go about dealing with that? So we also are helping people with eviction prevention and financial coaching. And I do think that's one of the harder challenges is so many of us, with all the inflation that's going on, with prices going up, we have to do a better job of budgeting. And so I, I think that's a challenging thing right now. Uh, and uh, so our financial coaching program can help people with that. Rising energy prices has been uh, obviously a big issue as well. So those are some of the things that I, I think that uh, and just the uncertainty in general, w w you know, what is the economy going to do has right. been really, really hard. I think there's a, a sense, especially in Fitchburg and in, in Lemonster, <clears throat> of that optimism and of really a, that there's a sense of momentum, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a sense of momentum that um, the community is picking up steam and headed in the right direction. I just think, you know, the projects that you've touched, I mean, Driving by these beautiful old buildings and 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 breathing new life into them um, really speaks and lends itself to to that sense of optimism and to that sense of momentum. Um, you know, I, I I know we've both had a couple of meals together at, at Tacos Tequilas and and Dario's, and I think you know when people see people investing here on on our main streets, it's it's really powerful and it it snowballs and, and builds on itself. Um, and I, I just don't know if any of that would, would be happening without um, New View and, um, and and your team. How many people are, are on the team at New View? And, we have about uh, 15 on our team now. Yeah. Um, and I got to say, just I, I just want to thank you because part of what makes this possible is that there really is, is a unified. Uh, it feels like North Central is a little bit more unified than it has been in the past, and people coming together and setting a clear direction, whether it's in all of these communities are now looking really to take advantage of the assets that they have, um, whether it's Fitchburg, Lemonster, we see it in all the communities. 
and having a delegation at the state house that works together, that works with our local mayors and uh, boards, select boards, uh, that's been really helpful because now it's clear what, what are the things that, you know, we should be doing. And for our staff, it's helpful to get the resources and also the recognition. Uh, they're working really hard helping people with problems mm -hmm. um, and to be able to know that our voice is being heard and that the voice of residents of the community uh, is being heard, not just our staff, but the people that we're working with. Uh, that makes a big difference to us. So how did you get involved in this work? I mean, you're, you're a lawyer and an attorney by, by training and trade, uh, but what brought you to community development and what keeps you in it? Because um, it's hard and I think, you know, every time we take two steps forward, it seems that, you know, there's another barrier or a challenge, but I mean, you seem to just be a resilient guy, <laughs> right, to, to stay in this and, you know, over the long haul, um, push these projects that other people, I think, would just put their hands up and walk away from. So that's a really interesting question. So I, I did go to law school, and while I was there, we were, we were studying these cases. And it was like, why did anybody care about this case? This is like the dumbest thing ever, uh, like, you know, to take it all, to appeal it all the way to the Supreme Court. So I, this happened to be a real estate case, so I walked over to the planning school and said, oh, so I ended up getting a joint degree in law and in urban planning. I then worked as an intern uh, all the way through law school. I had a job at uh, an organization that built special needs housing. Yep. So I learned about housing there. I then went to the law f to a law firm in downtown Boston. Uh, but I always really wanted to get back into the community development field. I just thought it was a really cool way to bring skills as a planner, as an attorney, um, and make a difference. And uh, it's great to, you know, we do more than one thing. We're working with people, that's really important. We're working with housing, that's also really important. We're working with small businesses. So it's all the things that I really- And you're really the glue to put all of them together, right? And, and, and get the whole community kind of moving forward and in the, in the same direction. Yeah, that's the a, idea. Right, yeah. exactly. As a, as a place-based organization, as a, particularly in a world that's become non-place-based, uh, but we all live in a place, and uh, having those three different tools is really important to us, to have the leadership, to have the housing and the counseling, uh, and the small business along with the development uh, is a great way to take advantage of the assets and let people you know, invest in their own communities. And we, want to, we are a, a community-led organization, and this is one way that we can that we can do that is by bringing all those things together. What's your vision for New View moving forward? And, and one of the, could you give us some, a, a hint or maybe a tell of what, after the Fitchburg Arts community, maybe after we do that, that ribbon cutting, um, what, what is the next kind of projects that, uh, that New View might be interested in taking on? So if anybody has any ideas of some other housing projects, we're definitely interested in them. And I think in this environment, we have uh, you know, there is a need for just straight affordable housing too, particularly in some of our smaller communities. Right. So the next project we have after this one that's in line is actually a, yet again another school. This is two schools in Athol that we're also redeveloping into a mix of affordable and senior housing. Um, so that will be the next one that will come online after that. Um, and then we have a couple other ones that are a little further out on the development side. We also would love to do more work on helping to create more uh, home ownership too, so renovating vacant homes, those are a couple of things. And continue to expand our small business work. We're going to be doing more work around lead paint uh, to help people live in safe homes as well. And you talked about the stewards programs and the different ways that um, you know that people are coming together through Newview. Could you talk about for people watching at home who want to get involved or want to participate uh, in the environmental initiative or um, or any other thing that New View is touching? How do they get involved with with um, with these programs and um, how do they get more information? Sure, and I guess that when you say what's the next thing, the stewards are oftentimes leading us with great new ideas of things that we should be thinking about that are coming out grassroots. So yeah, people could just give me a call. Uh, the, the office number is 978-342-9561, or you can go to our website, which is newviewcommunities.org, and there's an info button on there. Great. Thank uh, you very much. No, it's been, Mark, thank you so much for the work you do. Um, it, it's really 
when you understand the totality of the impact that New View has, it's, it's really remarkable and our community is so much better served for it. So just want to say thank you for, uh, for, for fighting for all of us and uh, for the impact that you've had in North Central. We appreciate you and hope, hope we'll continue to partner and work together for, uh, for a couple more years here. Great. Thanks a lot. You bet. All right. That's it for this month's episode, everybody. Um, we will be back in September, uh, hopefully after celebrating the closing of the Fitchburg Arts community and look forward to speaking with you again soon.